Good morning. It's Friday, and we're about to talk about it. I mean, I've been getting bombarded with um, uh, direct messages. Is that what you call it on um, uh, when someone messages you or puts an I don't know a post a reply to my video on YouTube? I I don't know what they call it. I it's a message. I've been getting hit up. People been calling me all types of things, uh, you know, uh, calling me, you know, just crazy names. Uh, it don't matter to me because I, that means that I'm stepping on some toes and I'm telling you the truth about what has to be done when it comes to debt collection. People play games. Uh, there's a lot of people that will post videos on YouTube. All they're trying to do is to get the mighty dollar from you. Maybe they're trying to get 5 or $10. They haven't done anything but just trying to sell information to people. Uh, my company deals with people on the phone and face-to-face. -face. That means that we have to perform a service. That means that we must know what we're doing. That means that we have to communicate with debt collection companies, we have to communicate with the bureaus, we have to communicate with them. Other people that you see on YouTube, they have no, uh, they don't know what they're talking about. I even just watched a video from an attorney, and I guess, w w I don't know where in the hell he got his information from. But he's an attorney, and we'll just let that be like it is. But he told people that you should not pay a debt collector, regardless if they've been hired by the company that you owed money to. But then at the end of the video, he said you do got to pay the debt collector. So I don't know how that all runs, uh, you know, how he's mixing that all up. But if you watch my videos, I tell you there's a specific trail to where you may have to pay a debt. I've always said it, and that's where I get most of the people that argue about my videos, that they're like, uh, people say you should never pay a debt collector, and, and you're the one on YouTube telling people that there's a point where you may have to pay a debt collector, and because it's true, because it's the absolute truth. And if you're going to move forward in your life, if you're going to move forward in your life, you're going to have to stand in front of certain things. Some of those things are going to scare you. Some of those things are going to cost you financially. But I'll tell you this, because I've done it. I've had to do it. I've had clients that had to do it. You will be able to move forward and put that behind you. And you don't have to look over your shoulder and you can, and, and there's brighter days ahead of you. When I paid that debt, that was uh, $43,000. I paid $43,000 in a damn cashier's check. Took a picture of it and then I walked it to the to the uh to the uh debt collector's office. And this was a debt where I didn't even make any money with a business another company that I had uh and lost money with it and this was a debt that should have never came to me on a personal level but it did. And I had to go and walk that money there, and the debt collector would not come out of his office. He probably thought I was going to do something to him. I don't know why we think that. I got too much to lose. I got family. I got grandkids. But the day that I did that, I paid the $43,000. You know, I made all of that money back within a month or two, and I made way more than that uh, months later because I put it behind me and I stopped. Your mind can only think about certain things uh, where you're, you're, that has your attention. And usually us as humans, what's going to be the most attention is the things that you fear or the things that you worry about. The good things that happen to you uh, or to us, we just, some for some reason, we don't pay too much attention to them unless it's something that's just like huge, uh, hugely uh, good when we should pay more attention to the good things because that gets your mind thinking of good and then more good will happen to you. And you get rid of the things that worry you. You deal with them. You face them. And that's what I do. That's what I do. And that's what I talk about on, on, on these videos. So now we're about to talk about some debt. They just released another group of mixed credit cards. 
I'm just telling you, you're going to watch my videos probably a, a year from now, 2020, 2021, year and a half, to two years, whatever it is from now, and you're going to say that Stephen Williams was right about what's happening with the lending economy. And uh, there's over, for just a mixed group of department store credit cards, over five point three million dollars released this is stuff is being released on a weekly basis now week that means that if you add this up it's going to be over 20 million dollars in in uh in 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 just a month and the thing about it thing about it that's that's really crazy is that uh the uh with with these, these are small, like three hundred dollar, four hundred dollar balance cards. So you're seeing huge amounts of people defaulting. Like it's not like a credit card, and you and you got five million, and people had twenty five, ten thousand, twenty five thousand, thirty thousand dollar balance. These are small cards. So these are people uh, that low income people that went into these stores. Uh, got tricked into getting a discount, and the people know that if you take the card, we get you to apply for the card. You take the card, you do your charges. Now that that, that those jeans and the shirt that you bought, now that that would have cost you fifty dollars. Now it's going to cost you three hundred dollars in interest. That's why they do it. That's why they do it. And and you might be asking, well, why do they do it? Over and over, why do they keep doing this regardless of the default? Because they know with their formulas, they sit down in their accounting rooms and they say, well, if we're going to make $300 from that charge that a person does, and this is just telling you how it works. I mean, don't quote me on the exact numbers, but if we're going to make $300 on a charge from that individual, how many people can we afford to go bad if we do it that way. And then what is the amount of payments that a person will make before it goes bad? Hmm, let's look at that formula. We could give all of these cards away because we're gonna make billions of dollars in interest and we can let them default. And then we can sell it to debt collectors and get a little bit of the money back from selling those out in bulk. Hmm, this is a, this is a business model. That's what they're doing. Another one that was released, $5.4 million more mixed credit cards. So we got uh, 10 million, uh, almost $11 million in department store credit cards released this week. That email came to me on Wednesday, two days ago. I used to get these on a monthly basis. Now I'm getting them weekly and sometimes I'm getting them daily. I used to never get them during the middle of the week. Okay, now we just talked about that. There's um, more debt, but we're going to move forward because I want to talk about solutions and I want to talk about what I'm seeing on YouTube that is just really tearing up people, uh, leading you down the wrong direction. You need to follow me because num let me give you some reasons why you should follow me. Number one, I have a company. I have an office. I'm certified. I'm licensed, bonded, insured. We deal with thousands of customers. Over 100,000 people have uh, either consulted or used information from my company, and we've worked directly with them on some type of way with their credit and their debt. So we, we, the decisions that we make and the information that we tell people, it has to uh, be, uh, number one, legal, and it has to be a real solution because we're going to be held accountable for it. My certification, as you see behind me, the state of Wisconsin had to look at everything that we do to be able to get certified. They don't just let you start up a company and just get a license and then you're in business. They don't allow you to do that here. I don't know how it is in other states. They don't allow you to do it here. Uh, they had to look at how we were going to help our clients with their credit and debt problems. And if they didn't think that it was a legal solution to it they wouldn't have let us open our doors uh okay so now if a debt collector buys a debt you hear this a lot people say well if they buy the debt you don't have to pay them you still they're, they're going to send out a letter to validate 
uh, to ask you to dispute the debt. We call it a validation when you send it back. And that's when you ask for all of the information, proving that, number one, that the debt is yours, and proving, number two, that you have a legal uh, obligation to pay them. If you don't do that, this is where someone had, had put on my YouTube underneath one of my videos, and they said, well, uh, if you don't validate it, it does not give them the right to sue you. And I was like, I didn't say that in my video, but it does start the process but when you don't respond to the dang letter, it gives them the right to put it on your credit reports. They know this, you know this, because if it didn't, how in the hell did a debt collector put the information on your credit reports? What gave them a legal, uh, uh, made it legal for them to put it on there? Maybe it's not legal in the court of law, but what gave the them a right to put it on your credit reports with these companies, uh, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, they do ask something of those companies that want to put the stuff on the reports. They don't want people to just throw it on there, even though it seems like they do, and their, their uh, audit process to put it on there is very weak at best it make it allows a lot of mistakes because their goal is a different goal than the debt collector but if you don't respond to that letter you give them footing on putting it on your credit reports now don't take my word for it if you have a debt collection on your credit reports nine times out of ten you did not respond to that letter and then even if you did respond to the letter, they had some type of, type of legal standing to put it on your reports if you validated it and then they showed you documentation that they have a right to come after you for the debt, they're going to put it on your credit reports. So if a debt collector buys it, there's one process of validation. If debt collector assumes it, that means usually they got it from another bigger debt collector and then they're going to assume it and try to collect it for that collector who may have bought it or they may have uh, been assigned from the original company. And the only reason why they do that is because you may be in the area closer to, uh, you're in the area closer than that original debt collector so they think that you may have more chances of collecting the debt because you know what's going on in in in, in that state i'm talking about the debt the debt collecting company that assumes it from a bigger debt collector that is assigned from a the original creditor gets it over to a debt collector in your area they assign it to that debt collector because they're closer to you if you owe a debt and they believe that that debt collector can collect it. That's that chain right there. Now, if it is purchased, you can still have the two work together or the bigger debt collector will try to go after it. And that's where all of this is where the battle has to be fought the hardest. Well, you always got to fight hard. Don't get me wrong. But if you fight hard right there, when you get that original letter, um, from the debt collector, that is where you need to put your, your biggest fight because usually what will happen is that they don't have the information and they will just stop and you and they'll probably try to sell it to someone else and you have to always be prepared to start that battle right there over again, but it'll never make it to the other steps. That's where you need to be prepared, but everybody tells you don't respond. Or they're, they're saying, uh, it, they're mixing you up. They're just saying all this crazy stuff about don't respond to the debt collection letter. Uh, and if you don't respond, that means that they can't legally do anything to you. When, yeah, they can't legally do anything to you at that point. But the steps that they're going to take is to get it on your credit reports. Next step, they're going to take that information from you not responding over and get a summons. And they're going to use that as evidence on your credit reports, you're making a chain. They're going to make that summons. By not responding, you're making a chain. 
that allows them to get over to put it on your credit reports. And then when they put it on your credit reports, what they're going to do next is they're going to get the summons and then they're going to send the summons over to you. And then that's when all everything is going to happen. And, and when you get that summons in the mail, if you don't respond to the summons the right way, what's going to end up happening is they're going to get a default judgment if you don't show up in court. Even if you show up in court and you don't answer each of the answers on the summons, you can end up getting a default judgment simply because legally you have to answer each of the numbers, which they call them questions, that's on the summons. Sometimes you'll get a judge that may not, uh, well, that'll understand that you're not an attorney and that you, they're going to let you just basically answer to the debt. But if you get in front of the wrong judge, what they're going to do is they're going to say, well, you didn't answer all of the questions in the summons. And usually one of the biggest traps that I've seen people run into is that when you have the summons, you have to actually answer that to the attorney and you have to send it to the judge before you go to court. Some judges will allow you to bring it into court, but they usually like to be prepared before you go to court. So you have to answer it line by line. It's very simple if you just... Uh, take the time to read it, and it has these numbers, line by line. Some of those may just be questions like that you live at this address, and you would answer, yes, I live at this address, or I used to live at this address. And then you answer those in just a simple uh, sheet of paper. It doesn't have to be anything special. Send that to the attorney that sent the summons, and, it, and then you send it to the judge. And both of those will be listed at the bottom or the last page of the summons. And you can actually, if you ever got, got a summons, you can see it at the bottom where it tells you that you do have to do that. That some of them will tell you that if you don't do it when you get in the court, that they may not allow you any time. Because remember, when they go to court, they have a whole bunch of people in there and they're trying to, you know, push, push the uh, cases through. Uh, so if you don't, so that's that's where I think in my last video a lot of people got mixed up or a few people got mixed up is they were thinking they were skipping all the way to the summons when I was actually saying that if you don't respond to that initial letter from the debt collection company, which it states on there that you have a right to dispute, if you don't uh, respond to it, then that's where they're going to have a right to put it on your credit reports and then the next step that they're going to take is to uh, move that to a summons to get you to come into court. And if you don't answer those properly or you don't show up in court, you can get a default judgment. And then they have a legal uh, recourse to go after you for the money where they can start a gar garnishment process. And, and or you can uh, uh, see if you can if you if they do get the uh, default judgment or even before the default judgment, you can ask for time to sit with the uh, uh, attorney to see if you can work out a settlement. And that's the process that we run here at the credit repair shop is that at some point you may have to pay those debt collections. So don't believe people when they tell you that on YouTube that there's never any time that you would ever have to pay a collection. So if you need help or you have questions, put put your uh, questions or comments below this video, and you can always reach out to us. Go to the website, thecreditrepairshop.com. Thank you.